Good morning and welcome to Walking with Jesus Through the Word, one chapter per day. I'm Pastor Jason Van Bemmel from Forest Hill Presbyterian Church. Hope you're doing well today. This is our 778th day in the Word of God. We're back in this wonderful, beautiful, dreamlike, strange book of Song of Solomon. Today and tomorrow we'll be wrapping up this book. Uh, it's going to be a little bit before we're back in First Thessalonians. We kind of wrapped up uh, the first half of First Thessalonians yesterday, but today is Song of Solomon 7, and then tomorrow Song of Solomon 8, and then we're going to be in Proverbs 21, and then we're going to actually start the book of Job. So it's going to be a little while before we get back to those final two chapters of First Thessalonians that deal with the second coming of our Lord. But today, Song of Solomon chapter 7. Let's pray and ask the Lord's help. Father in heaven, thank you. Thank you for your word. It is rich and full of life and so helpful to us. Father, we pray that you would be with us and that you would um, teach us from your word. Help us to see what you would have us to glean from Song of Solomon chapter 7 today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Song of Solomon chapter 7. How beautiful are your feet in sandals, O noble daughter! Your rounded thighs are like jewels, the work of a master hand. Your navel is like a rounded bowl that never lacks mixed wine. Your belly is a heap of wheat encircled with lilies. Your two breasts are like two fawns, twins of a gazelle. Your neck is like an ivory tower. Your eyes are pools in Heshbon by the gate of bath Rabim. Your nose is like a tower of Lebanon, which looks toward Damascus. Your head crowns you like caramel, and your flowing locks are like purple. A king is held captive in the tresses. How beautiful and pleasant you are, O oh, loved one, with all your delights. Your stature is like a palm tree, and your breasts are like its clusters. I say I will climb the palm tree and lay hold of its fruit. O oh, may your breasts be like clusters of the vine, and the scent of your breath like apples, and your mouth be like the best wine. It goes down smoothly for my beloved, gliding over lips and teeth. I am my beloved's, and his desire is for me. Come, my beloved. Let us go out into the fields and lodge in the villages. Let us go out early to the vineyards and see whether the vines have budded, whether the grape blossoms have opened and the pomegranates are in bloom. There I will give you my love. The mandrakes give forth fragrance, and beside our doors are all choice fruits, new as well as old, which I have laid up for you, O oh, my beloved. So chapter 7 really brings us to the climax of this intimate relationship between uh, the lover and her husband. This is, uh, in, in the way I look at it, you have the, the dream sequence that kind of interrupts uh, things or takes us on side journeys uh, in the middle chapters of the book. But it's like really preparing for uh, the wedding bed and the sexual encounter between husband and wife. And, and this is really where that chapter takes place. So this is um, language that is intensely physical and sexually intimate between husband and wife. Again, husbands, I don't need to tell you this, but your wife probably doesn't want to hear you tell her that her belly is like a heap of wheat. I'm not sure that she would take that as a compliment, um, but you should delight in your wife's body. You should uh, delight in one another's bodies. You should enjoy being together in marital intimacy. That should be just a centerpiece of your, of your marriage relationship. It's something that should not be neglected. It's something that if you've got issues, relational problems, uh, concerns that you're dealing with, you need to work through those things. Uh, if you need help working through some of those things, part of what I do as a pastor is to meet with couples for marital counseling. I would be happy to do that if you wanted to reach out to me. Um, I can also refer you to some uh, professional Christian counselors who are in, in the area. If you prefer not to meet with me, you want to meet with somebody you don't know personally, 
whatever you're comfortable with. But you need to work through those things because you need to be able to come together with an intimacy and a vulnerability and a mutual affection and appreciation and desire, passionate desire for one another. Uh, you can say, well, we're getting older and all that stuff, but you're supposed to continue to have passionate desire for your spouse in the marriage bed. And that is something that is clearly and repeatedly front and center here in Song of Solomon. Um, of course, the language here is not inappropriate. Uh, it was funny. I was reading some of this out loud uh, a few minutes ago. So I was prepping and, and Beth was asking me, aren't you a little embarrassed or a little awkward to do this? So like, it's in the Bible, right? It's there in the Bible. And uh, so it's it's here. Um, but it's not inappropriate. It is, it's good and it's good to be celebrated. And one of the things I would also say for parents, parents of teenagers, is to um, encourage the positive celebration of married sexual intimacy. Sometimes I think that Christian young people grow up in a world where it's like, ew, right? The, the approach to sex and intimacy and all that stuff is just ew because it's not time for them to enjoy that yet. But they should know that it is something to be enjoyed, something to be delighted in that is coming for them down the road when God brings them their their partner. And if it's not, it's not, you know, not everybody does get married. But I think generally we need to have a, promote a more positive and strong view of married sexual intimacy. Now, I also want to say, and you'll hear these same things over and over again because they're here in Song of Solomon so clearly. I also want to say that marriage is meant to be an earthly picture of Christ's relationship to his church. And so what we see here is that Christ delights in his bride. Christ loves his church. If you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, if you belong to him by faith, then you are a part of his church, of his bride. You should be. It really is unusual to the point of really being disobedient and abnormal and very unhealthy if you are a professing Christian, a believer, and you are part of the bride of Christ, and you're not a part of a local body of believers, which is the local manifestation of that bride of Christ, and you're not actively serving, participating, contributing, rejoicing in, worshiping together with a local church. You really need to have a local church home, and you need to celebrate what is good about the church. Listen, we live in a very critical age. No one is perfect. I am sure that just as a husband or a wife could look at their body and think about sexual intimacy and think about imperfections and flaws and the aging process and we're not, we're not quite what we wanna be, right? And all that kind of stuff, we can do that. We can also look at the church and say, well, tch, she may be the bride of Christ, but she's so far from a beauty. She's got all sorts of problems. There's people who are selfish and petty and divisive and gossipy and blah, 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 blah. Rejoice and celebrate what is good in the church gathered together on the Lord's Day week by week. We have the privilege of gathering together with Christ's people under Christ's lordship, to meet with Jesus, praise him, hear from him, respond to him, serve him, enjoy fellowship with the body of Christ, reach out to those who are visiting and share the gospel with them in word and in deed. And then through the outreach of the church, we have, a, we have an opportunity to show the world how beautiful Jesus is and how beautiful he is making his bride. So instead of finding all the flaws, I don't like that song. Why did they pick that scripture reading? I don't like the way this elder leads worship. Why does he have to pray so long? Why are we always standing up and sitting down? I wish it would be this. Instead of finding the flaws, prepare your heart to worship and appreciate how beautiful the bride of Christ is. If Christ can look at his bride and say that she is beautiful, then we who are privileged enough to be part of that church, that bride, ought to say how beautiful Christ is making us. And we ought to appreciate one another. 
And we ought to just enjoy worshiping the Lord together with his people and, and enjoying the fruit of it. You see, they go out into the vineyards and the vines have budded and the grape blossoms have opened and the pomegranates are in bloom and there's fragrant incense. God says that our worship is like a fragrant incense before him. It is a fragrant aroma to God when we sing, when we lift our voices together in worship and, and he feeds us with his word with the milk of his word, with the meat of his word, with the manna of his word, with the fruit that then his his word produces, the seed of his word produces the fruit of the spirit in our lives. And we should we should just rejoice in all of that. We should just delight in all of that. Yes, things are flawed. Things are far from perfect. Things could be a lot better than they are. But things are good. Christ is good. His church is good. Let us rejoice and give thanks, and wholeheartedly participate in the life of his bride. Let's pray. Father in heaven, it's a privilege for us to be called to be part of the bride of Christ. Who are we that such love should be lavished upon us? We're so thankful, humbled. Keep us thankful and humbled. Keep us from a critical spirit that would be prideful and arrogant. As soon as we're criticizing, we're assuming that we know better. We're assuming that our way would be a better way. That's pride. It's the root sin. It rears its ugly head and it undermines everything good in our marriages as well as in our church life. Humble us and make us thankful, joyful, contented. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, join me tomorrow as we wrap up Song of Solomon with chapter 8. I hope you have a blessed day in the Lord.